If it form the one landscape that we, the inconstant ones, are consistently homesick for, this is chiefly because it dissolves in water. Mark these surrounded slopes with their surface fragrance of time, and beneath the secret system of caves and conduits. Here the springs that spurt out everywhere with a chuckle, each filling a private pool for its fish and carving its own little ravine whose cliffs entertain the butterfly and the lizard. Examine this region of short distances and definite places. What could be more like mother or a fitter background for her son, the flirtatious male who lounges against a rock in the sunlight, never doubting that for all his faults he is loved, whose works are but extensions of his power to charm, from weathered outcrop to hilltop temple, from appearing waters to conspicuous fountains, from a wild to a formal vineyard, are ingenious but short steps that a child's wish to receive more attention than his brothers, whether by pleasing or teasing, can easily take. Watched in the band of rivals as they climb up and down their steep stone gentles in twos and threes, at times arm in arm, but never thank God in step, or engaged on the shady side of a square at midday in voluble discourse, knowing each other too well to think there are any important secrets, unable to conceive a god whose temper tantrums are moral, and not to be pacified by a clever line or a good lay, or accustomed to a stone that responds as they have never had to veil their faces in awe of a crater whose blazing fury could not be fixed, adjusted to the local needs of valleys, where everything can be touched or reached by walking, their eyes have never looked into the infinite space through the lattice-work of a nomad's comb. Born lucky, their legs have never encountered the fungi and insects of the jungle, the monstrous forms and lives with which we have nothing we like to hope in common. So if one of them goes to the bad, the way his mind works remains comprehensible. To become a pimp or deal in fake jewellery, or ruin a fine tenor voice for effects that break down the house, could happen to all but the best and the worst of us. That is why, I suppose, the best and worst never stayed here long, but sought in moderate soils where the beauty was not so external, the light less public, and the meaning of life something more than a mad camp. Come, cried the granite waste, how evasive is your humour, how accidental your kind is kiss, how permanent is death. Saints to be slipped away side. Come, purred the clays and gravels. On our plains there was room for armies to drill. Rivers wait to be tamed, and slaves to construct you a tomb in the grand manner. Soft as the earth is mankind, and both need to be altered. Intended Caesar's rose and left slamming the door. But the really reckless were fetched by an older, colder voice, the oceanic whisper. I am the solitude that asks and promises nothing. That is how I shall set you free. There is no love. There were only the various envies, all of them sad. They were right, my dear. All those voices were right, and still are. This land is not the sweet home that it looks, nor its peace the historical calm of a site where something was settled once and for all. A backward and dilapidated province, connected to the big busy world by a tunnel, with a certain seedy appeal, is that all it is now? Not quite. It has a worldly duty which, in spite of itself, it does not neglect, but calls into question all the great powers assume. It disturbs our rights. The poet, admired for his earnest habit of calling the sun the sun, his mind puzzled, is made uneasy by these marble statues which so obviously doubt his anti-mythological myth. And these gamins, pursuing the scientist down the tiled colonnade with such lively offers, rebuke his concern for nature's remotest aspect. I, too, have reproached for what and how much you know, not to lose time, not to get caught, not to be left behind, not pleased to resemble the beast who repeat himself, or a thing like water or stone whose conduct can be predicted. These are our common prayer, whose greatest comfort is music, which can be made anywhere, is invisible, it does not smell. In so far as we have to look forward to death as a fact, no doubt we are right. But if sins can be forgiven, if bodies rise from the dead, these modifications of matter into innocent athletes and gesticulating fountains made solely for pleasure make a further point. The blessed will not care what angle they are regarded from, having nothing to hide. Dear, I know nothing of either, but when I try to imagine a faultless love, or the life to come, what I hear is the murmur of underground streams. What I see is a limestone landscape.